You may be wondering, why don't we have vaccines to everything that's out there? Because it's the holy grail of medicine to prevent infection before we're sick and can pass it on. But it's actually really difficult to make vaccines. And if you look in our vaccine science PowerPoint, there's only been one disease that's ever been eradicated via vaccination, and that's smallpox. Uh, other diseases, especially here in the U.S., have been what we call eliminated, meaning that they still exist in the world, but we've gotten uh, infections rate down really low thanks to vaccination. So things that we consider to be eliminated here in the U.S. are polio, uh, measles, mumps, rubella, although we've been seeing some outbreaks lately due to lower vaccination rates in certain parts of the country. But anyways, um, what we're getting to here is that it's actually really difficult to create vaccines and then also to make a vaccine product that will work in everybody out there. Because I think what we don't realize is that, you know, we know, first of all, that we're all genetically different. So even people in the same family, they're slightly different. They react differently to different situations. A brother and sister, or two sisters even, can be extremely different from each other. Same thing goes for immune response. Um, people all have different immune responses and they react differently to different, um, to different pathogens. For example, um, I get a really bad cough every time that I have um, a cold and that's because I have an overactive inflammatory system in my lungs that gets activated anytime I have a little cold. Now somebody else they might hardly have any symptoms from a cold and hardly ever feel sick. Um, so this is just very different. So one of the reasons why some vaccines don't work is because it's very difficult in the clinical trial stage to account for all of the different genetic variabilities that are out there. And we actually see this a lot, is that uh, a vaccine will work in uh, early clinical trials in a very small group of people or even mice or monkeys but then when it's given out to a larger population or think geographical location so if it went from a clinical trial in the US to then a clinical trial in Africa oftentimes we see efficacy rates drop down and that's because our genetics are just so different and there's so many different variables other than that too that are impacting how well vaccines work. Nutrition is another example. Um, you know, in general, Americans getting vaccine in general are um, have more access to, to nutrition than some people in other countries. Now, th those are some big generalizations there, but you get my drift. Different nutrition can have a big impact on whether or not a vaccine is efficacious or not. Um, so these kind of things. Um, really impact whether or not we can get a working vaccine. The other really difficulties in getting a working vaccine are what we call correlates of protection. So really knowing what factors are going to lead to a building a long-term memory response um, and also um, that's going to get rid very efficiently of the specific pathogen for that vaccine. So correlates of protection factors that lead to protection from infection. And this is actually really a trial and error process of what we have right now. Hopefully in the future we have a better way of figuring out what the factors are that lead to protection. But for the most part in public health, we really ask, does it work? And if so, great, let's use it. Um, but really in the science side of things, we don't know how these things work. Um, so a few factors that we can think about our first, let's consider the antigen. So not all antigens are created equally. Some antigens are better at eliciting a long-term robust memory response than others. So I've drawn our virus here. Remember, we have lots of different antigens on the surface of the virus. I've just randomly drawn antigen one and antigen two. Now, correlates of protection-wise, we might find after experimentation that antigen 2 is actually rubbish at eliciting an immune response. And antigen 1 is actually protective um, in terms of eliciting a great uh, memory response. So if we were to design a vaccine candidate, 
uh, to go into clinical trial, we would want to focus our work on antigen 1 and making sure that uh, in this vaccine candidate that we really try to elicit an immune response to just that antigen 1. Where the other antigens are not great, we don't want to waste our energy on those. Um, so yeah, so this process is really luck. Like, do we, um, with the measles vaccine, for example, we don't know exactly how that works but we know that the correlates of protection are good there, that the antigens that elicit an uh, immune response are very efficient. Uh, and we don't have all the answers as to why, but we know that that's very important. So this, um, this concept of is that antigen able to stimulate a good immune response, that's actually called immu immunogenicity. So that's something that a lot of scientists are studying in the lab, is what are the best antigens, what do they look like, and how can we design better targets in our vaccines in the lab. The other aspect to why is it so difficult to create great vaccines is thinking about antibodies. So we learned in our uh, core concepts is that antibodies um, are just kind of randomly made so there are lots of different B cells each making a different kind of antibody and this is a totally random process um, and so we could have different B cells making slightly different antibodies that might uh, recognize different parts of antigen 1 or antigen 2 and so these antibodies are actually not created equally and usually we can find one antibody that works really, really well at getting rid of um, that pathogen. So those are called protective antibodies. So not all antibodies are protective. So remember I said antigen 1 in this example is a lot better at eliciting immune response than antigen 2. We could also say that we need that protective antibody against antigen 1 to get rid of it. So this, hopefully you can see, gets a little confusing and is very difficult. That's why it takes many, many years to create new vaccines. Not to mention that once we do create a, a potential candidate, it takes 10, 20 years for it to go through all of the clinical testing and then safety testing by the FDA. So it's a really long process of A, finding these correlates of protection making a vaccine that has the right antigens um, that will simulate the right antibodies um, and then also thinking about how um, you know different genetic backgrounds will also impact whether or not those correlates of protection are right that's why it's so difficult to generalize because a trial that works out here in the u.s may not work out in another country that has a different genetic background and uh, different nutrition, different all sorts of things. So lots of complicated things going on in making vaccines. I hope you can appreciate the wonder when it does work out and the difficulties and the need for more funding into this research.